So Cyberpunk 2077 was released yesterday and I just spent a whopping 12 hour play session really sinking my teeth into Night City and I have a ton of thoughts for you guys. A few general tips for the game, but mostly today we are going to be doing a review of launch day. We are going to touch on everything from the PC to the console port, graphics, bugs, romance options, all kinds of stuff. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, and let's jump into my personal thoughts on this. And as always, there's two things right at the top that we have to get out of the way. There will be no spoilers in this video. There's never going to be any spoilers here on the Pineapple channel, especially for that juicy, juicy main story. I will be talking loosely about some themes I noticed in the main story. Watching this video will not dampen your experience at all. And secondly, I wanted to say if you guys have not hit the big red subscribe button down below and rang the notification bell, do so because you will be missing out on a ton of super high quality Cyberpunk 2077 content if you don't. We've already put out a few videos here that I'm sure you'll enjoy, and I can personally guarantee you that there is going to be some bangers coming up in the next month as well. So once again, hit subscribe so you don't miss a thing. But with that being said, let's jump into the Cyberpunk 2077 review day one. All right, so the day one launch of Cyberpunk 2077 spoiler free review. Where do we start? Well, I think the best place to start is probably the prologue, because as I'm sure you've heard, it takes about six hours to get to the title screen, which is kind of insane, but it's also really well done. Like I played for a good 10 hours without really realizing that it had been 10 hours. And I want to stress, this is in the slowest part of the game. Like the opening is very slow. I think it does a lot to set you up with the knowledge that you need going into Night City, but it is very much reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2, where you have a very long time before you are free, quote unquote, to do what you want. And unlike Red Dead Redemption 2, it's not two hours, it's six. So know that going in, if you're going to sit down to play Cyberpunk 2077, you're kind of not playing it until six hours in. Like you are playing Cyberpunk, but if Cyberpunk the game is Lord of the Rings, the prologue is The Hobbit. It's very long, plenty of good stuff in there, and it's not the main story. And not only is this prologue good, but it makes you feel things. I had seen a lot of reviewers previously mention that V's character arc felt very well-rounded, and that you as the player have a substantial motivation to help V out, and to see V's ambitions through. And I gotta be honest, they really nailed that. Much more so than I was expecting. I don't ever feel like I need to help a main character, or I need to help somebody, or I need to do this for them. It's always like, mine because I'm the one playing the game. But I gotta give props to CD Projekt Red. They really made me care about V's mission in this game. Not only that, but the people around him and the things that are going on in his life all of a sudden meant a great deal to me. And I do think that is because of that six hour intro to the game. And many of the features are not unlocked in the six hours. They're, most of the map is not unlocked. Like this is, this is literally just a story about the game, <laughs> but it's a pretty good story at that. The first thing I wanted to bring up is actually romance options. See, I know everybody is excited about the romance options and I can confirm yes I think Judy is just into girls I did try to get her to you know hang around and she she was not about it with male V obviously I haven't tested all the life paths yet but at least for the one I'm on currently she was not interested in fact there wasn't even like an I'm interested dialogue option from male V additionally I wanted to say that there's a lot of romance options that you wouldn't think will give you positive results and granted I haven't dove super deep into this game yet but I have noticed that I tried to say some things that I thought were going to be quote unquote mean or give me the bad option and I actually got a good response out of it and I don't want to give anything away there with who gave me a good response to a bad answer but it definitely makes sense once you get to know the character a little better and I think that's really cool. I mentioned in one of my other videos how you couldn't just click nice option, nice option, nice option and get a romance out of it and it has played out exactly that way. It is very very robust and I wanted to say in relation to it being robust there's also romances between other characters and not just one or two, there's a lot of romances with other characters and you can like talk to each other about how they feel about the person they're talking to and then it's honestly really in depth. That being said though, if you wanna hear more specifically about just the romance options, I will throw a card to that video right now. Something else I wanted to touch on in relation to the themes of this game is that man, this game is adult. I know when you hear that, you think risque or maybe like adult activities, etc., etc. but that's not what I mean. I mean, this game deals in mature themes across the board. Board. It is intense, it is gritty, and all these characters are so well realized that when something happens to anybody in this game, or even the threat of something happens to any of these characters, it gets you. Provided you're not one of those people who skips cutscenes. And speaking of cutscenes, actually, I just said cutscenes, but there's no cutscenes that I've seen so far in this game. Literally not a one, and I am 12 hours in. Granted, I got through the prologue and then have not done any main story missions since. I have been doing all side missions and all side content, which is definitely what's on the screen now. And I gotta say, man, I am loving some of this side content. I don't know if it's because I really didn't get to shoot very many people up during the prologue, but I 
am having some fun with this gunplay. I do want to rescind my Call of Duty comparison. It's not like Call of Duty, but it is much more like Call of Duty than it is like Fallout. And the sheer variety of weapons in this game is actually kind of crazy. Finally got myself one of those sniper rifles from the trailer, and man, does it smack. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the bugs. The bugs in this game are definitely prevalent, but something I want to note is that on PC, and granted, I have a pretty nasty computer, on PC, I'm not getting a lot of issues other than frame rate. For me, frame rate has been a big issue, frame rate and lighting. Granted, I'm not playing with ray tracing on, but I'm playing with everything pretty much on high or ultra, including the crowd size. And the only real issues I've had, aside from lighting, are very few and far between. I want to reiterate here, I am not having the buggy, messy experience that I'm seeing some console players have or that was reported in the leaks. This game is pretty well optimized, at least for a very high-end PC. I know that's kind of a gimme, but a lot of the early reviews were done on PC and cited bugginess as a major issue. And frankly, I just haven't had that be a problem. I haven't had to reload the game. I haven't had any systems not working. I have had like a cigarette that was supposed to be in somebody's hand just suspended in midair. And there was another time somebody who was smoking a big cigar got up and left the room and the smoke was still coming out of the spot where he was. Other than that though, there has really not been any significant bugs. Definitely no game breaking or game hindering bugs. And honestly, for me, that was one of the big worries that I had. But I do want to turn this over to you guys and say console folks, let me know in the comment section down below what console you have and what your experience has been thus far. I'm sure other people will find that useful as well, but from everything that I've seen in all my friends and viewers that are playing on console, the biggest issues seem to be the game will crash and you've got to reload it, but it auto saves, so really that's just a time suck, and the actual model quality is pretty low on the base PS4 as well. But everybody playing on a next-gen system, PS5 or Xbox Series X, at least from what I've seen thus far, has really enjoyed their time. So again, please comment your system and your experience down in the comment section down below so not only I but the rest of the community can get an idea for what it's like on what systems but on PC with a 2080 Ti and a 9900K this game is running really well obviously I would like a few extra frames and I would love to be able to turn on ray tracing but those things just aren't in the cards for me right now and to be honest the game looks great without them I do have two tips though if you're somebody playing on PC turn off chromatic aberration turn cascade shadow quality down to medium and turn off film grain that'll get you a much clearer picture and will save you a lot of headroom on frame rate drops. Consider that as my gift to you. And speaking of tips, actually, I have a few really small gameplay tips I want to throw in the middle here. First being loot absolutely everything. Loot until you can't walk fast anymore and then go to a drop box and sell them. Them meaning everything you picked up. Sell all your junk, sell all your weapons you're not using, sell all the armor you're not using. Money or eddies is the biggest thing in this game for me, at least right now. And while I've seen some people on YouTube recommending that you have a pocket full of cash for side quests, the thing that I've noticed I need the cash for right now is actually upgrades for my cyberware. I actually just skipped the upgrade I was supposed to get for my hacking chip and bought the next one above that because I had enough money. And I gotta be honest, I feel like a little hacker god. The other thing I wanted to say is if you haven't built your character yet or if you haven't assigned all your points yet, this is something to be wary of. In my opinion, obviously there's going to be a lot of builds, blah blah blah, but in my opinion, I think you should have a high either intelligence or body. And I say that because you either need to be strong enough to open doors or you need to be able to hack them open. Obviously not all the time, but there is some really good loot behind these locked doors, and if you're not a good enough hacker to open it, or if you're not strong enough to open it, you're going to be missing out on those items. And the last thing I want you guys to do is miss out on some items, so whichever one sounds more you, whether you want to be stronger or smarter, I'll leave that up to you obviously, but make sure you do pick one and upgrade it out of the gate, because you are going to need to go through doors, and if you don't have the strength to open them, you're going to want to hack them open, and if you don't, you're going to remember me telling you this, and you're going to be upset. I'm just trying to help you out. Something else I wanted to note is that the uh, the crafting is is not very good right now, so I would I would kind of avoid that as much as possible. I'm sure there will be some updates to it at some point, but as far as I've dug into it now and from every review that I've seen online, it's it's not a great route to go. If you have had a different experience, please let me know in the comment section down below. But everything I've seen and everything I've tried, it's just not a very robust or fun experience. It's much more beneficial to find a better weapon than to try to upgrade your own, at least for the time being. Another thing I wanted to note is that fights with enemies who are above your quote-unquote pay grade are doable. They take a lot of ammo, but they're definitely doable. As long as you're good enough at hiding behind cover and peeking out and shooting and getting back behind cover, you know, obviously there's a mechanic to it. If you're good at that, if you've done any sort of boss fights in the past, if you just treat these high-level enemies like bosses, it's really easy to walk through them. All you gotta do is play your cards right and you can wind up with some super high-tier loot. It's how I actually got my first smart weapons. I ran into somebody with my van and then they got mad, so I got out and tried to kill them and realized 
that they were a much higher level. And I was like, no, I've committed. I'm going to do it. And it did take like 40 shotgun rounds. But I tell you what, man, I got a smart weapon out of the deal. One last thing I wanted to touch on is the cars. Now, the cars in this game are cool, but they are not my favorite. And the motorcycles in this game are cool, but they're not my favorite. The transport in general is, is to me, the most lackluster part of the game. I saw a lot of other people saying that they were good. They were just fine. They, they weren't great. And I think that's a good way to put it. Obviously, driving feels good enough in this game, but it does not feel great by any stretch of the imagination. The audio sounds fantastic, but the actual weight behind the cars either feels too weighty or too slidey. I'm sure those will get tuned out in updates, but as of right now, for me, the driving just doesn't feel right. Also, I should note there that I'm playing on keyboard and mouse because that definitely impacts it and I'm not going to act like it doesn't. But all in all, so far, Cyberpunk 2077's day one review from your boy Pineapple is effectively that it's pretty good. The adult stories in this game have taken me by surprise. At just 12 hours in, I've had a surprising amount of heartache from multiple different characters. Shocks, twists, and turns, and that was all before the title card. After the title card, I've had a lot of fun just exploring Night City and trying to learn my way around, which I will admit I have no idea where anything is still. The game does throw a ton of systems at you, and I think it will take me a while to get fully used to all of them, as I'm sure a lot of you will understand. But I wanted to make this review because, to be honest with you, I'm very impressed with Cyberpunk on day one, and I know I even had some friends who refunded the game, citing like broken mechanisms and stuff like that. For me, I've really been enjoying it. I think it has lived up to the hype. Obviously, it's a little bit of a buggy release, but on a high-end PC, I'm seeing little to none of the issues I saw people with PCs complaining about last week. So all in all, I'm extremely satisfied with the launch. I'm eager to play more Cyberpunk. I'm eager to get better at all of this. Right now, I'm running a hacker ninja build who has been um, using an assault rifle a surprising amount. But all in all, this game really is something special. It is different than I expected. I want to say that as well. It's different. It's slower, but it's it's so good. It's so good, guys. All right. Like I said, let me know in the comment section down below what your platform is and what your experience has been thus far. I can't wait to read your comments. Once again, I wanted to say, though, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you smack that big red subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any more super high quality Cyberpunk 2077 content. Thank you guys all so much for the support recently. It has been absolutely incredible to see how many of you have been riding hard for the Pineapple Gang, and I will continue to do my best to bring you guys the best content. If you notice a gap in videos by a day or two, it is because I am trying to grind this game and get myself as well acquainted so I can show you guys around the city as best as possible. I just wanted to note that here for all the diehards that have stayed to the end of the video. But until then, I'll be in Night City. I hope you are too, and I'll see you guys right back here very soon with a brand new Cyberpunk 2077 video. All right, peace.